Uh, we're going to talk to Chairman Comer in just a second. We've got this to deal with first. This is going to happen in less than an hour. Elon Musk sits down with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to talk about his 2024 run for the White House. And now Elon Musk says he is open to sitting down with former President Trump, RFK Jr., and President Biden on Twitter. Let's bring back to the show 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy and former special assistant to President Trump. He's Mark Lauder. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. OK, first to you, Vivek. Democrats, the media, they're in an uproar over DeSantis bypassing the media to go on Twitter. But there's huge upside here. We had The View, MSNBC, Jen Psaki downplaying this. But Twitter has nearly 397 million followers. Do you think that this is a good or bad thing that DeSantis is going on Twitter? I think it's great. I think we need more open dialogue in the country. I do think that it's interesting that the host who's moderating the debate between himself and or the discussion between him and Elon is David Sachs is one of his own donors. But I think that we actually need more open discourse in the country that disintermediates traditional media, goes to the people directly. That's a big part of how we've been running this campaign as well. I also think the competition in the campaign beat breeds strength. And I hope that that helps this campaign, this entire 2024 cycle, be about the what and the why. What do we stand for and why do we stand for it? Rather than personal attacks based on the who, I think that'll make our party and our country better off. Yeah, so what Rebecca said, Mark, I mean, DeSantis has been battling the media and Democrats twisting his policies on the pandemic, on, you know, what he's doing with education in Florida. And he looks like he's got an upwards of a $200 million voter outreach push, $100 million to start with. 2,600 doors are going to have workers to knock on every door at least four times in New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina, five times in Iowa. So, you know, so he's got a lot of firepower here. Is it going to work with DeSantis going, be, be, you know, around the media to get his message out? Well, and that's the best way. And that's really how many how many Republicans have to run these days, because you can't count on getting a fair shake from the mainstream media. So this is very innovative in terms of his announcement. But in terms of his ground game, that's how primaries are won. You have to be organized on the ground in Iowa, in New Hampshire, in the early states. And so since he has such a huge war chest, it's it's good to see him actually doing those things. Too many candidates just rely on attacks and thinking, if I just attack my opponent when actually it's getting people to the polls, to the caucus sites, that's how you win primaries and caucuses. Yes, yeah, so what Mark just said, we also have this, Vivek. Former President Trump is opening up a string of attacks hammering DeSantis on social media. Are you, are you thinking they could bloody each other so badly they leave each other damaged? Or will voters say, ah, this is just politics? No, I think that's exactly what this race is on track to do. It's part of why I was called into this race. I do not think this should be a biographical brawl. I think this needs to be about what we stand for as a movement. What does it mean to be American? To put America first, we need to rediscover what America is. And we're not going to get there with two people boasting about their own accomplishments and attacking the other guy. This needs to be about the country and the people who are actually running to represent. And I also think that though I communicate plenty via Twitter, I think that's actually very important to go to left wing media as well to be able to say that if I'm going to sit across the table from Xi Jinping, I better be willing to sit across the table from media that's hostile to me or from other candidates on the Republican debate stage. And so my view is too long as a party, we have been running from something. We got to start running to something. Our vision of what it means to be American. That's why I'm in this race. And frankly, that's our bet for why we're going to succeed over the course of the next year is this isn't about me or Trump or DeSantis. It's about the people of this country. It's about what America actually stands for. That's why I'm in this race. So, and that's why we're optimistic. Vivek, Mark, just say, hang on just one second. Vivek, you, uh, we've seen you go on CNN, MSNBC. We think you've been on there, too, where you've been really hammered. And you've been really pounded by the anchors. Do you think it's working because, you know, is it getting your message out? Because we've seen anchors twist your policies and what you stand for. They will certainly twist and lie and, and deceive. That's OK. It's the playing field is not even. We still show up. And I'm not just doing that on media, Liz. I'm also I went to the south side of Chicago last week. All black community, not exactly a place where traditional Republican politicians go. I go to college campuses. I think it's a winning strategy for us because the facts are on our side. The logic and arguments on our, are on our side. We need to show up and actually deliver that message. 
especially to younger Americans who are hungry for purpose, hungry for meaning okay. and direction. And the more we're providing it, the more successful we're going to be. I think we can win in a landslide election next year like Reagan did in 1980. I'm running in this race to actually deliver it. Okay. And like most things, at this point in the season, we're still very early. Long way to go before next year's general election. So let's turn to Mark. Mark Lauder. So we've got the, uh, the judge in the Manhattan DA's uh, business records case. It's a civil case. It should be a misdemeanor with a penalty. He ramped it up into a, cri into a criminal case. Uh, that hearing's going to come uh, pretty, coming up pretty quickly in the middle. Rather, let, let me back up. It's going to come up during the Republican primaries, the hearings for this. How are these probes going to hit Trump in the race? I mean, we've got Trump sending a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland asking for a meeting, seeing the DOJ, Special Counsel Jack Smith, unfairly mistreating the former president in a classified documents probe. Um, so how's that going to hurt Trump or affect Trump in the race? Well, you know, I think the one thing that Donald Trump has shown since 2015, 2016 is everything that you think you know about politics, throw the book right out the door. Because, you know, once he got indicted, his popularity increased. He doubled his lead in the Republican in the Republican primary field. So literally, if he's spending his days in a New York courtroom and his evenings on Twitter or having uh, or Truth Social or on television talking about how I'd love to be in Super Tuesday states or wherever he may be, but I can't be, that's just going to fire up the base that knows that every single day, liberal media and the radical Democrats are targeting this man, and he will use that to his advantage We've already seen him do it uh, in the primary process. We'll see him do it again uh, from the indictment. We'll see him do that right through the trial. Well, you know, what Mark just said, Vivek, now, you know, we've got Ron De Governor DeSantis targeted uh, over, you know, his fight with Disney, over Disney uh, officials opposing the, pre uh, excuse me, the former, uh, excuse me, Governor DeSantis's position on education policies in Florida. And then you have Senator Rick Scott issuing a travel advisory for socialists to Florida, warning Florida is openly hostile to socialists. Vivek, this is after the NAACP's own travel warning saying black Americans shouldn't, shouldn't go to Florida. And the, the, the chair of the NAACP lives in Tampa. And, you know, it's thousands of black owned businesses that had black immigrants. That population in Florida is more than six other states combined. So you, you see the attacks now, Vivek, going pointed now at DeSantis. Yeah, look, I think that these are two very different sets of attacks. To be clear, I think it is downright wrong to use the power of the police state to arrest one's political opponents. Whether you're Democrat or Republican, that is chilling. That is wrong. And I've said that if I'm elected president, I would pardon Trump, not just Trump, but anyone who is a victim of a politically motivated persecution through prosecution. The rest of it gets back to what all of us face. I mean, Liz, I've faced a lot of this. Look at the way The New Yorker writes about me or about you know, the way the media covers Ron DeSantis or many others in the Republican primary field. On that level, I say, if you can't handle the heat, you stay out of the kitchen. I'm in this because I can handle the heat. I think that we show up, we win based on arguments, we win based on facts. And so I'm a b big believer. I preach about the end of victimhood culture in America. Okay. Mostly I'm preaching to the left, yeah. but I like to practice what we preach, too. Hardship isn't victimhood. That teaches us who we are. We want to get into this. Which, which party is more united? I mean, RFK Jr. is now polling anywhere up to 20 percent among Democrats, splitting the Democrat Party. Hillary Clinton just said President Biden's age is a legitimate issue. Mark, let's get you to watch this. Watch President Biden here. With Nancy leading the way, you never had to worry about whether the bill would pass. She said she had the votes. She had the votes every time. And she had the votes so many life-changing pieces of legislation. She helped rescue the economy in the Great Depression. So uh, the president just said Nancy Pelosi, uh, he said it last week, um, helped us get out of the Great Depression, which occurred in the 30s. Uh, he's, Biden is an unpopular incumbent. A majority of Democrats say they don't want him to run again. Your final word, Mark. It's not because of his age. It's not because of his blunders. It's because of his policy failures. And, and that is opening the door for uh, RFK Jr. And I think to others, possibly a Gavin Newsom, if they're going to do it, they've got to do it now. This president is weakened, not because of his age, not because of his stumbles, but just because how bad he is. And so if they're going to do it, they've got to do it now. It's the only chance they've got to take him out. Vivek Ramaswamy and Mark Lauder, thank you so much. And now with the news coming in, House Oversight Chair James Cole.